What's up guys, DDBK videos. I make military content, put on the internet for you guys to enjoy. I have gorgeous, deep, sea blue eyes that you can just dive right into. Anyway, today we're gonna to be talking about the busiest time of year for US Navy corpsmen. Now, if you're a specialty, there's 33 different types of corpsmen. Everyone goes to corpsmen school basic, and then you could get a specialty, but some specialties this won't really apply to because it is so specific that you'll never encounter it. However, for most corpsmen that go to deployable units, wherever riverine squadrons, boats, right? When you're on a boat, doesn't really matter if you have a specialty, you're doing everything. X-ray will see sick call. Fucking general corpsmen will do lab stuff. Like, it's, it's across the thing. Marines, you do everything when you're with the Marines. If you're in your own unit, you're pretty much the only corpsman, you'll do everything for them. And even some clinics and hospitals, you'll move around and do this too. So it actually applies to a broad spectrum of corpsmen. If you are gonna be a corpsman, I recommend hitting the save button down below, put it in your favorites, so you can watch it in the future. So everyone knows come fall, is September specifically, is when flu season starts and you start seeing Walgreens signs outside saying, oh, get your flu shot today, whatever, and then you know some concerned parents come in and get their flu shot, which you should. However, on a military base, it is 100% mandatory. So on top of your regular job, say you're at a greenside unit and you're the only corpsman, you're gonna manage sick call, doing people's PHAs, their audiograms, their other immunizations, any sort of specialty help that they need, field coverages, and then on top of that, you need to get your unit to 100% flu readiness. This is one of the things where it's like, oh, your PHAs can be like kinda done, but your flu has to be 100% every single time. They give you a deadline normally at a higher level, so like when it comes out in September, we normally have to like December to get like 100% every single person, no shit, flu ready. Which is easier said than done. You're like, oh yeah, you just put the needle in their arm. Okay, yeah, try finding people who are above the rank of E6. They will duck out of flu shots. There's anti-vaxxers in the military. There's people who no matter what we tell them, it's like, you're getting the shot. Oh, I don't want the shot. I don't care, you're getting the shot. No matter what, they're gonna get the shot, but people will prolong it and hide from you as long as they can until you eventually just throw them under the bus. That was my talk and be like, yeah, uh, this person's been dodging me for like a month, and then someone higher ranking has to be like, you need to go in and get your shot right now. However, it always is a, is a long process of people trying to get out of the shot, be like, oh, I'm allergic to it. It's like, no, you're not. I know you're not. <laughs> That's not the busiest, busiest time. It's when you're ramping up for deployment, <laughs> which means your deployment hymns are turned on at the same time, so you're doing a workup for deployment, and flu season is going down. So not only do you need to get 100% in your pre-workups, right? Say you're deploying right after fall, which means your pre-workups is during fall. You're gonna need 100% flu readiness. Anthrax, your five shot series, so you got zero, one, and five. At least you gotta get three, right? Before you actually deploy. Your Japanese, your Japanese encephalitis vaccine, which is a two shot series, your typhoid, which is only good for two years, your yellow fever, which is only good for 10 years, your meningococcal, which is only good for five years, and everyone has different dates because everyone's been on separate deployments or your first deployment, so you can't just, a broad spectrum, everyone gets a shot. You have to pull up IMRs for every single person, so if you have a really big unit, you then have to pull an Excel roster of every single person's medical readiness and do them, and then project them. So if like their PHA is gonna expire while you're deployed, you gotta do it before. If their flight physicals or long forms or whatever, which are 2808s and 2807s, which are super extensive, deploy, uh, expire before, you need to do them before. Mental health assessments, pre-deployment health assessments, dental exams. If they're gonna expire, they need to do their dental beforehand because they probably won't have that type of capability on the boat. Now, your, your brain is probably exploding, but it, unless you're a corpsman who's been greenside or with a boat or whatever, and you're like, oh yeah, that is super stressful. Or if you've been at a, if you've been at a clinic and you haven't experienced it, this yet, mega ultra stressful. I've been trying, <laughs> there was a span of like four months of pre-deployment workups where literally we're sitting at like 30 or 40% and Marines just won't come in. We did shot stand downs of a, of a squadron of almost 600 people, actually it's over 600 people, stand downs where we would ha hang out in the hangar bay where they keep all the planes, put out the vaccines and be like, come get your shots. Literally like 13 people would show up a day. That is, <laughs> that is the most disgruntling long part about our job, it's the most busy part because you set up all this stuff, get a few amount of people, and then you still have to track on other people. No matter what, throughout the day, you're gonna be working to get to 100% medical readiness. However, it's never gonna come. I've never been in a unit with 100% medical readiness. I don't think it, it's real, I don't think it's possible, but you have to strive for it anyway. <laughs> 
Don't, don't be wrong, like, it would be hypothetically possible if there weren't anti-vaxxers who are extremely uneducated, uh, people who didn't care, and, <laughs> and people who value uh, chilling on their phone over their lunch break more than uh, getting their vaccines to pre prevent them from diseases that will kill them and their families. <laughs> But yeah, I hope that gave you guys some insight if you're gonna be a hospital corpsman. I know a lot of people follow my page because they wanna be corpsman, they know I'm a corpsman. Uh, me and Nikki are the only two corpsmen on YouTube right now, which is crazy because of as I'm recording that, me and Nikki are the two most subscribed active duty Navy people on YouTube. <laughs> All right, insert uh, the clap soundtrack. All right, boys, all right. If you guys can, do me a favor and leave a like. I would appreciate that. I'll see you in the next one.